Hi, my name's Matt Cardwell, and today I'm going to talk to you about pairing and using your StackShot 3X remote control. The first step that we want to do is get into settings, and we're going to navigate down to wireless config. We're going to press that, and the first step is that first line there where it says wireless mode client. We want to change that to an access point, and that's all it takes. And next, we're going to go down to Remote Pairing Enable, and we're going to press that so it says Active. And now we're going to turn on the remote control, and it's going to give a slow blue light that's ramping up and down. And once that's done, you'll see that it's going to scan for all the 3X devices out there. It's going to look for one that's in pairing mode. The screen went away, that means the remote's trying to connect up. And as soon as it connects up, you'll see the little tiny remote icon up at the top show up. And that's all there is to it for pairing the remote. So now that the remote's paired, what I'm going to do is get into a motion mode, just so we can kind of show off some of the features here. And now that I'm in motion mode here, I'm going to navigate the remote. And you can see here that if I move the remote right, unfortunately, things are going backwards. And that can happen uh, depending on the orientation of your setup, but it's not that big of a deal to change. So what I'm going to do is go to settings and down to remote settings. And there's an option in here so that when you change the polarity, invert axes. So it looks like my pan axis, which is plugged into the X, is going the wrong way. So if I change that to inverted, now when I move right, things are moving right. So that looks good. Now I'm going to check the up and down. Up looks good. Down looks good. And then the Z axis. That one's going backwards too. So what we're gonna do is flip that guy too. So now when I go right, left, up, down, left, right, everything looks good. And uh, like I said, that depends on your orientation. You know, when you set things up, if they're flipped around the other side, so your perspective's on the other side, it would have been right for two of the axes. So it really depends on your setup. All right, now I'm going to go back and look at some of the other settings we have here. There's joystick speed. Um, we'll get into that here. So let's say uh, the Z axis here. So if I press the right and left, the A and the C buttons, that's moving pretty fast. So let's say I want to bump that down. We're going to go to 10% of maximum speed. So now when I do it, it's moving nice and slow now. That's perfect. That's what I want. Give myself a little more control. And you can do the same for the, the other axes. So maybe I'll just punch in the 50 for both of these. So now, now when I pan and tilt, it'll give me a little bit more speed control. Yes, perfect. Now the joystick portion of the remote is an analog remote. So the, the further you move it, the, the faster things are going to move. On top of that, you can get into this setting and adjust the maximum speed. All right, now this one looks a little bit confusing. It's not too bad. This kind of maps what the buttons and uh, what, the, uh, what the joystick is set up to do. So here, the left and right will control the X axis and up and down will control the Y axis. If you want to control the other axes or flip things around, you can go through those settings and remap the joystick button itself. Now you can see here that one axis is missing in this case. So left and right is X axis, up and down is Y. You still have the A and C buttons that can control the third axis. So in this case, that third axis is gonna be the Z axis because it's not mapped to the joystick. Here, Y and X, still Z. X and Z is going to have the buttons control the Y axis. So whatever axis you don't see here, the buttons are going to control that. We've already been through the inverting the axis, 
Dead zone is if you start to see drift in the joystick on the remote. When you first turn on the remote, it calibrates itself. But if you ever see things starting to move when they shouldn't be, you might have to increase that. If you want the joystick to be more responsive, you can adjust that as well. You can decrease it. And finally there, there's the shutdown time. And that's five minutes. So if, if you don't touch the remote or use the remote within five minutes, it'll automatically shut off the remote. So you can adjust that as needed. Uh, it connects up really quick, so it's not that big of a deal at the five minute limit. But if you want to give yourself extra time without it turning itself off, you can adjust it. Okay, now we're going to discuss the different modes that you can use with the remote. And I'm gonna show you a little shortcut here. If you go to settings, since the remote is on the last page of all the settings, you can kind of cheat and hit the up button to get to the last page. It's a little faster way of getting in there and navigating. So here we describe what the buttons do. And here you have the three different modes that we currently support. The basic mode lets you control two axes with the joystick like we were doing. And then the A and C button or the left and right button control the third axis. Uh, and like I said before, the third axis is whichever one you don't have being controlled by the joystick. The center button, B, will always fire the shutter. So that'll, that'll always take a picture. So for focus stacking, you know, you probably want to leave it in basic mode for manipulating uh, the position of everything. The second option is control. Now, with control, you're not gonna be able to control that third axis. What the A and C buttons now do is set something, and the something depends on which mode you're in. So for focus stacking, the A button is gonna set the start position, the C button's going to set the end position, and uh, uh, the center button will start the stack or stop the stack once you've start once you've set up things. Uh, for motion control, it's a little bit different. Uh, the A button will remove all keyframes that you have programmed, and the C button will add a keyframe. So, uh, and I'm gonna demonstrate that mode here since I'm already in motion. So what I'm gonna do here is move things to their start position and I'm gonna press the A button. Okay, so that's gonna set my start position and we're gonna add a keyframe at center. So I'm gonna press the C button now. There we go. So I have two keyframes in there and then I'm gonna move this guy down a little bit further, press the C button again, and then it's going to add that third keyframe in there. So there we've set up our move, and if I want to start it, I just press the B button. It's going to go back to the beginning, and then it'll start that motion profile that was set up using the remote. So completely hands-free. Perfect. That's what I like to see. Okay, so now we're going to try yet another mode. And we're going to go back into the remote settings. And I'm going to change real time, I change the buttons to real time MoCo recording. Now, this is a little bit different. You won't have keyframes with this but it'll do a real-time recording based off of whatever you do with the remote. So the A and C buttons are going to be back to the Z axis, controlling the Z axis, and then uh, the joystick just manipulates the X and Y axis. And like I said before, you can change how those work if you want. And to start recording, you actually push down on the joystick itself. So the joystick has a push-click option on it. So and once I press that, it's going to immediately start recording. The red light on the remote will light up. And then 
uh, you have two minutes to record your move and it'll track that. I'll show the tracking a little bit. Uh, so I'll press the button to start the recording. Now whatever I do with the remote, it's going to track that. Okay, then I'm gonna wait here and then I'm gonna come down really slow like. We're gonna throw in a little bit of a z-axis move. press the, the joystick button in to stop the recording. So there we go. That's our move. And like the other modes, to start you press the B button and when I press that it's going to go back to its start position and then it'll follow that path that we programmed in using the remote. So real-time recording, real-time playback, you can manipulate it any way you want. So there we go. Playing back a recorded move. This is pretty handy if you want to do freehand, but you want that freehand to be repeatable over and over again. And can't get any easier than that. When you're done with real-time recording and playback, the way to get back to keyframe management is just to press the ed exit real-time button. When you do that, you're right back to the previous uh, recorded keyframes that you've programmed in. And then next time that you want to do a real-time record, you just have to record it again. Thanks for watching. And shortly here, we'll have additional videos of us using the remote out in the wild.